but I am one of the million, one of the millions that has been raped. I am one of the millions of children that have been raped. I am one of the, you know, many, many, many female service members that was drugged and raped in, you know, on active duty before I deployed. And I can use all of that trauma and that pain, not as a victim, but as, and you know, I, I went from like being a victim to a survivor and now I'm a victor. And now I can say, you know, I thank, thank you for raping me. Thank God that happened. We are the David Johnson Show, bringing the veteran community stories and perspectives so you can design the life that you deserve. Welcome back to the David Johnson Show. We are talking about designing your life with Athena Ives from San Diego. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you driving out. You know, you did not ask and you were not aware of some of the cards that have been dealt in your life all these years, but hearing your story and getting to know you the past two months, what you have become this, this warrior after everything you've been through and serving in the Marine Corps and this role model of carrying the stress on your back and almost with like a shield saying, I can help other people and being what you've become, walk me through this story on how it all started. Absolutely. So I don't like, you know, you've heard the term forged in fire. Right. I say I was forged in trauma. Wow. And trauma definitely made me who I am today. I'm getting my doctorate. I'm going to be Dr. Ives soon, which is amazing. Never thought that would happen in a million years. Congratulations. I um, own my own company. I am a published author. And I am a sex trafficking educator as well as an advocate. And I only got there because of the trauma that I have been through and my warrior heart and spirit and never giving up. Which, again, you did not ask for or welcome it or want any of it when it started. No, but thank God it happened. Thank God what happened? The title of my book is called Thank You for Raping Me. And that is probably the story of my life. And I did not choose this. Who wants right. to be known as the girl that got raped? I don't at all. Um, it was, you know, it has definitely been a journey. And it is one where I have almost given up n numerous times. Um, I joined the Marine Corps when I was around 25, it was a lot later in life. But it was at a point where I think people are so afraid of failure. They're afraid of so many different things and they let that fear control them. Fear is often created by a trauma. And that fear will live under your side. Like, it's like the monster under your bed that everyone avoids. And if you let that control your life, you will never become who you're supposed to be or who you are. It will turn you into a weak, um, a weak person that lets fear control your life. Wow. And when was the first time you were raped? When, when did that happen? I was 11 years old. Um, from around 11 to 14, my older brother um, started raping me. And it almost broke me. I started researching suicide. And today, I use that to relate to sex trafficking victims. I use that to relate to, you know, I'm, I'm not a sex trafficking victim, but I am one of the million, one of the millions that has been raped. Millions. I am one of the millions of children that have been raped. I am wow. one of the, you know, many, many, many female service members that was drugged and raped in, you know, on active duty before I deployed. And I can use all of that trauma and that pain, not as a victim, but as, and you know, I, I went from like being a victim to a survivor and now I'm a victor. And now I can say, you know, I thank, thank you for raping me. Thank God that happened. That's why I wrote my book, Thank You for Raping Me, because I took the worst moments of my entire life and I used them to light a fire in myself. What do you do at that young age when that happens? I mean, it's tragic for anybody, let alone a child. Mm -hmm. So I, 
I read books. I pretended I was um, the Greek gods and Princess Leia. <laughs> you know, I I needed a warrior woman in my life that you know because I didn't have that. I didn't have anyone defending me. I didn't have any superhero. Uh -huh. So. I get it. So you were trying to find somebody to look up to, to defend you, somebody you could relate to maybe or f feel protection in. Mm -hmm. that makes sense? Yeah, and just oh. to escape the life that you're in. And instead of developing, you know, coping skills that are negative ones, you know, like that victim mentality or that woe is me, feel sorry for me, blaming absolutely everything in your life on that trauma, you know, oh, I got, I got a speeding ticket, well, it's because I was raped. Oh, I got kicked out of school, well, my parents beat me. Oh, I did this. And after I published this book, I can't even tell you how many people have reached out, have had actual people tell me, an army ranger tell me that I saved his life, that my book saved his life. How so? That I had the courage to tell my story and to talk about what is happening to millions of people and they don't know what's going on because no one talks about it. I've had girls come and take me to coffee, ball their eyes out in the coffee shop and tell me that they didn't know brothers did that. And they're so alone. They don't, you know. <sighs> so continue on the, with this this warrior spirit that you have that's, that's made you who you are today. I mean, you enlisted into the Marine Corps in 2006, mm -hmm. went to Fallujah. Yes. Talk to me about your Marine Corps experience. It wasn't the, the most glamorous experiences. You know, I, um, I wanted to go be a police officer because I wanted to be involved with investigations. And that's where my you know, passion was, is ultimately to lead me to be able to protect children. Um, it, that didn't happen. You know, our life definitely takes us on different paths that we're just like, kind of like, oh, good God. Okay, I thought I was going to end up here and now I'm completely on the other, other side of the world. Mm. Um, patrolling with infantry units. I was part of the Lioness program and that was put into effect when at that time we weren't allowed, females weren't allowed in military, you know, the, the, in, on, like the combat positions, the MOSs, we weren't allowed in those positions. Right. So what was happening was the insurgents would smuggle all of the contraband in with the women. Mm -hmm. And because our men couldn't go Search look at them, them, yeah. we They were getting all this, you know, all the weapons in, more people were dying, and we we're like, what are we gonna do to stop this? Well, guess what, we need females. And because they weren't allowed in at that time, that position, they're like, okay, now we need volunteers. You aren't gonna be trained. You aren't gonna pretty much have anything. And when I got there, boots on the ground, they're like, hey, stay behind, doc, don't die. Wow. So I'm patrolling the streets of Fallujah, getting shot at, um, having to open up dead baby bodies to find, you know, the, the we had intel come through that they were going to be um, transporting like paperwork and different explosive devices inside dead baby bodies. Mm. And so that day when one came through, I had to open it up. Um, and I don't think I would have been able to get through that at the time because I had to decompartmentalize. I had to take that and put it in a box, but that was nothing compared to what I had gone through before. And it's just, it seems like there are times when you, you don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. And it's just this never ending pit of hell and you see no way out. And it's just, that's that, you know, at that time you have to, you have to imagine it. You have to use that warrior heart and spirit and in your mind, you have to create it in your mind because you cannot see it in your human body. You can't mm. see a way out. You can see no hope. All you mm. see is things getting worse and it's what well, what was the turning point when you said enough's enough i'm going to start this new chapter in my life and really design my life to be this warrior that's going to be this role model i think you know it's hard to pinpoint because you know we don't just overnight change um it's definitely a progression and i think a huge eye-opening experience was writing my book and really for the first time in my entire life actually admitting what happened mm -hmm. there's stuff in there i didn't you know um i haven't ever told anyone and i was more truthful in that book than i've actually even been with myself 
And that was a huge transformation where I was like, you know what, how can you heal from something if you don't tell the doctor what happened? If you don't say, hey doc, my um, leg, you know, I was actually shot. Oh, instead of going and be like, oh, hey doc, I just need a Band-Aid. No, you have to be like, hey, I was shot this time. It's still in there. I need to dig it out. You need to clean it. If you don't, it will. You'll never. You're, you will never heal. So, when you were travels, when you were traveling overseas, did you start to realize that as well? I mean, is that when it kind of kicked in? Was it more stateside, or what, what, what were the travel, the traveling overseas of Thailand and stuff? The tra- for you? traveling made me realize that my story was common, mm-hmm. but it wasn't. You know, like people's jaws would drop and like, he went to combat? Oh my gosh. And some of the stuff that shocked them, I was like, well, it's just it's normal. And then some of the stuff that I thought was like absolutely horrifying, they're like, oh yeah, that happens every day. I'm like, oh, so you were raped too? Yeah, I was raped too. Yeah, but like, oh, you were trafficked. Yeah, I, you know, wow. was raped by like 50 men. Oh, okay. And then you'd start to realize like, you're get the hell over it like stop if you don't face this you you have to admit what happened to you so you have to be vulnerable you have to talk about it and if you cover it up it's just going to be like okay you're not gonna Mm. you're not gonna get over it but you have to admit it and as soon as I admitted it and I realized I was like you know I have been through a lot and you know what I will be damned if I'm going to go out of this world and not get what I deserve because I did not go through this hell to just end up here. And I started fighting back and I was like, screw you. I am not giving up. I deserve so much better than this. I, you know, and not only that, but after people started, you know, the, the stories opened up, um, people telling me, you know, I had a female Marine tell me that she, you know, she, she told me, she's like, I didn't know people go through this. She's like, thank you so much. She's like, you literally saved my life. And I just got done telling my husband that, you know, this person raped me. We're going to counseling tomorrow. Wow. And I have never felt closer. And the, sa- the thing that is the most common thing I've heard from, you know, like, I don't know, like probably around 100 survivors that I've talked to, the first time that they tell someone the same thing, I can finally breathe. Because when you hold that secret in, it eats you alive. It completely transforms your mind the way you think of yourself. You don't, you don't value yourself. You think, you think you deserve it. And that's why so many people stay in toxic relationships. That's why ha- so many people end up going from one horrible situation to another. And I started realizing that I was like, I need to take responsibility of this, you know? Do you think so many people feel strong or people feel that they can tell you their story because they see you, they see what you've become and they look up to you so they feel comfortable? Do you think that has something to do with it? It's definitely, you know, when you're trying to explain something to somebody that has never gone through it, they it's just kind of like they don't want to hear it or they can't relate. And it's just, but when it's somebody that, understands and that they you know can relate to it they aren't going to judge you they aren't going to oh i hate it when people walk around eggshells like oh my god you're so delicate i don't want to hurt you you've been raped shut up i don't want to be known as that i don't want to be treated like that i want to be treated exactly what i was before it happened and you know that's a big reason people don't come out and tell it because you're going to be treated differently Mm -hmm. so if you have had you know a a a significant other that was sexually assaulted don't talk about it don't avoid it like so many talk v- about it they have to bring it up right i mean uh unless to- like if you know about it you know and even if you don't go if it's somebody you actually love and you care about this is so common the likelihood that your significant other has been sexually assaulted is is it's likely more than likely happened so if they haven't talked about it talk about it hey has it happened to you rewind a bit in your life and as we talked about you were raped by your brother it's in the book 
tell me about when you almost had to go to testify against him at court, what happened and how that whole came, came to light. Well, after I got out of the Marine Corps, um, well, when I got back from deployment, it was the first time I actually took legal action against him for what he had done to me because it took me so long to actually admit it to myself. It took me like 12 years to actually admit what happened, even to myself. I would not, I didn't even write about it in my journals. I pretended it never happened. So after I found out that um, he raped my sister, that almost, I almost didn't come back. I found that out when I was in Iraq. And living with that kind of guilt is definitely what has, you know, given me purpose and so much drive because I don't, no child should have to go through that. That is such a pain. You will, it's a, it's a life sentence because every single good moment in your life, every first kiss, every time you fall in love, every first intimate moment, that's with you. Mm. They ruin it. They take away so much joy and happiness. They ruin some of the most loving moments of your life. Wow. And I don't ever want anyone to feel alone in that. And it's such, it's so common. People need to know what it really does. It doesn't deserve six damn months in jail. It deserves a life. Is there ever a time with everything you've been through and where you're at now, stress gets heavy or is it do you feel a personal fulfillment of being able to say this is what i went through i'm the warrior today the comic book stuff you're doing mm-hmm. the stuff you're doing with your business is is it fulfilling or does, does it get heavy at times is the burden heavy it's heavy every single day but i think that heaviness is what drives me and the helping people mm-hmm. does that drive you oh that's that's what i meant by the yeah, fulfillment when, when people absolutely. are coming to you and saying I was raped too. And I don't know if fulfillment's the right word, but because of what you're doing, because of what you stand for, because you're taking this public stand on a very <laughs> public stand, yeah. people are coming forward. Mm-hmm. Does that mean something to you? It's everything to me. And I don't, I, I don't want to be up here. You think I enjoy crying in public? It's, it's embarrassing. Um, but this is, it's a duty. I don't want this. I was chosen for this. Wow. And, you know, everything in my life has led me to this point. And that's why I'm here. Because I have a story that can save and has saved lives. Did your time in the Marine Corps help prepare you for this too? Like you said, some of the, what happened to you as a child prepared you for the Marine Corps and going to Fallujah. Mm -hmm. Did the Marine Corps help you prepare you for this too? You know, a lot of people that were sexually assaulted in the Marine Corps, and I was drugged and raped twice by good people, like not good people, good friends of mine who I considered good friends of mine, brothers, another brother raped me, you know, it's, it wasn't a blood brother, but it was right. military brother. Um, that, you know, that almost broke me because it was like, here, I, I came from one family that raped me to another family that raped me. But then it's such a big family, um, and it taught me so many things about leadership and about, dude, if I can get through, you know, war in Fallujah as a female, I can do everything I did. I, you know, I survived absolute hell there, and I did more than most of the guys in my unit did. I saw things that men would do you know, kill themselves over and I'm okay with, um, because I've been through worse. So it has molded me and it has given me so much courage and, you know, strength and pride and to show other people, look, you know, my parents, my dad told me before I deployed that if I died over there, it was my fault that I deserved it. Wow. You know, I say, I said in one of our shows earlier, we were talking about leadership. I said, you know, leadership is cumulative 
you learn, you learn, it grows. Knowledge is cumulative. Mm -hmm. I feel like your experiences in your life have been cumulative. And and this is a chapter where you're just getting going. Mm -hmm. You now have the experiences to be the, you've had them, but they've, they've, it's compounded. Mm -hmm. And you now have the power to go out and be this powerful warrior Absolutely. as opposed to maybe 10 years ago, where would you have been? Mm-hmm. Right. And not, not in a bad way of, you know, where would you have been, but yeah. you're at a stage now where everything you've been through from childhood to being raised in the cult, as your book talks about, to being in the Marine Corps, to you know, they groom warriors. I mean, let's face it. Marines are hard chargers. They groom yeah. warriors to being in Fallujah, to being out, to getting your PhD, to working with law enforcement. Now you're at a point where you can stand and really say, I'm the warrior, come follow me. Hell yeah, I can. That's pretty powerful. You know, you weren't, you, no warrior became a warrior overnight. Wow. I have never met a strong person that hasn't had a hard life. You are molded in it. And if, you know, I all the th- things that I have been through, it's like going to the gym. You aren't going to all of a sudden be a bodybuilder. You have to lift. You have to fight. You have to, you know. I always, like, I go back to that description of the monster under the bed. That That's the trauma. Wow. That monster is the trauma. And you're letting, you know, most people, I remember as a kid, you were so terrified to put your feet on the ground at night because that monster was going to come get you. It's, you're letting it control your going to the bathroom at night. It's your fear. And a lot of fear controls everything and it stops you from getting the life that you deserve. So unless you get down and you fight that monster, you'll never get the life you earned. And the more you fight with it, the stronger you become. So one of these days, I always say, um, my feet are going to hit the floor and that monster is going to be like, oh, shit, she's She's up. (laughs) So what's next? What do the next two to three years uh, mean for you? Well, it's definitely an exciting, like, I know it sounds ironic to say exciting, but I do feel such a huge, bur- not burden, but a responsibility to share my story. And the more opportunities I get, so I have to work on that. I have to work on getting my story out there and I have to, you know, network and talk about it and share and work with other people because no one's talking about it. And the more people that know the truth, the more healing that can happen and the more people can be aware of what it, what damage it does to children. How do people find you? I came across you online. I know you're, you're posting a lot. You, mm-hmm. you, you got a, a, a very good online presence, but how, how do people find you? Where do, where do people hear about this story? Um, I do a lot of work on social media because that's the platform nowadays people sure. are using. Facebook, I have Athena Ives, author, Ives, I-V-E-S. Um, I do page, I have a page on there. I also have athenaives.com. Um, the other, the company I do own is called Athena's Furies. And that company was started with another fellow Marine female friend of mine. Um, and what it is, we create products that are based off of female warriors throughout history. And the reason that is so important for us was because her and I both went to combat and, you know, we've both been snubbed by many military men. Um, oh, you're a female, so you don't rate. Um, but I was in combat. No, you weren't. You weren't allowed. Actually, I was, I was Mm. in combat. You know, a lot of people don't know that, that we did that stuff. So we... There was, we felt alone in that. And feeling alone is, you know, that's just a recipe for, mm, you know, that. staying depressed. But when you have that camaraderie and you have those people that you can relate to, so that's why we share these products that are, you know, we educate people about amazing female warriors throughout history, like Grace O'Malley, Pirate Queen of Ireland, Lagertha Shield Maiden, all these amazing women that have served for centuries in war and no one's talking about him. Wow. That's amazing. I am honored you drove out here to tell me your story. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And like I said, th- you're helping me accomplish this mission and whether I want this mission or not, it was given to me. And yeah, thank you for helping me accomplish it. Well, it's my pleasure. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. <laughs>